Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just recording this before I go do something because something needs to change. So I'm going to change something. So here we go. So, hey, this is not the video I was planning on shooting today. Things kind of went south today. Uh, it was supposed to be, you know, the previous hair color and then snap and, pff, you know, different hair color. Hmm. But yeah, that didn't work out, so some shit happened, and I just decided to go ahead and um, something that I was dealing with all day, and you know, on top of everything else that happened today, my computer for the video that I shot earlier didn't record the voice, so that was kind of adding to everything else, but... Um, so bonus though from it is that I finally went into a full on panic attack mode again. So I wanted to film for, you know, just to, uh, explain how I built up to a panic attack and what was my trigger into a panic attack, I guess. And, um, just how I felt and how I kind of deal with it. Um, I'm getting better with them and I'm getting more control, but today it was just really, really bad. Uh, again, I know that, uh, you know, it's not even Tuesday anymore when I'll be posting this. It's going to be like 3 o'clock in the morning when I post it on a Wednesday. Um, so this is a little bit more of a uh, story of how today went and why the panic attack attacked today. And um, it's a little bit serious, but whatever, you know, it could be informational. It could be an example uh it could be bad or good i don't really know uh, i i was kind of iffy about doing it but i figured show real emotion with you and um that way people that are dealing with panic attacks know that they're not alone and uh that you don't have to fear them so you know please watch and uh yeah i guess i'll see you at the end of the video so hi everybody, um, I know I just did the thing because I had a different introduction uh, Then I, you know, clicked and I was supposed to come back with my nice pretty hair And I was going to be all, you know, souped up and everything Um, <clears throat> but Um It is uh, not Tuesday anymore, so my video is late. <clears throat> um, right now, I wasn't going to film it, but then I thought, you know, maybe it might be important to show this. Um, what I'm going through right now is a panic attack. Um, I got new hair, <laughs> kind of like black cherry thing, but anyways, I wanted to go ahead and at least record this, so I can tell you what's going on. Um, the first part of the video, when I, I think it was a blue shirt that I was wearing, and you know where I ended up like that, I, uh, that was filmed Monday. <coughs> And my plan was to come back on Tuesday from my B12 shot and be able to uh, dye my hair and finish the video. But we all see how well that worked. It didn't work at all the way I wanted to. To go along with the rest of my day. And um, what this is right now is a panic attack that I'm having. It was kind of a build up today. But I think it's important that, you know, this is either a good thing that I'm doing this or it's a bad thing right now in my mind. It's pretty bad. But I think it's important to kind of show, you know, the steps of the panic attack. And um, I want to kind of explain it, like how I got to this point. <clears throat> 
Now if I could just talk and breathe at the same time. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to cut that much out of this because I actually want to show what it's like to be in a panic attack situation. With the voice going up and down. Uh, I've already gotten sick twice because of my breathing. Because what happens is that I start panicking so I'm breathing faster and I can't get enough air, and it makes me get sick. Um, so today, it's just been an annoying day. And there was just one issue after another. <clears throat> and a lot of things are out of my control. And it's torture. Because there's not very many people out there that understand how deep or how hard a panic attack can hit you. And are, you know, that it can build up over just like three little things and it can make you not be able to, you know, focus. Um, I know this video is going to be rough, but just go with me here because I'm trying to explain something. So this is, you know, beneficial. It's just trying to get there. Number one thing, like I just literally took a break. And sorry for the sniffles. It's going to happen. Uh, I'll try to cut as much out of that as that I can because it's annoying. Trust me, I know. I find it helps while going through a panic attack to focus on your breathing and, you know, just kind of take it in, let it go, take it in, let it go, you know, just kind of just literally close your eyes and just focus on your breathing. And that's it. I went ahead and took a little breather. Um, you can see the difference for me now compared to panicking where I was falling apart. Um, I have this issue like when I, well, as you can see, I'm all spotted up from my um, laser hair removal today. This is my last one from my face. And, um, yeah, it definitely hurts more today than it has in the past. Over the past couple of days, um, I've been dealing with a lot of negative self-talk. <clears throat> and that's what today's video was supposed to be about is negative self-talk and, you know, realizing it and overcoming it. But, um, I've been really bad about it this week. And I've been really negative. And although I realized that I was doing good because I noticed the little flaws and I was fixing them. So I felt, you know, encouraged from that to do better. And, um... I was working on it, and I was doing good. But today was just one of those days where things just kind of got out of control. And it just sucked. But the only thing is, with everything else that I have going on, it piles up. And, you know, I started worrying about all these things that are out of my control. And I, uh, and I, uh, I just realized that I can't do anything about any of them. And it sucks. So today started out, I got in my car and I was driving to go. It was in Cincinnati where I had to go. So I went over the pretty little bridge, and my car started wobbling. <laughs> so that kind of sucked. Um, and my brakes started squealing really, really loud. You know, it was the wheel wobbling, and then all of a sudden the brakes started acting up. But I got to my destination, and I had my laser hair removal. And that went swimmingly. Um... 
I could already tell at that time that I was starting to have, like, you know, panicky issues because it's my car. And, um, so I left out of there after my appointment and I came home. And on my way home, it was doing the same thing my car was. Um, except for this guy cut me off. And I went to go hit my brakes. And my brakes wasn't fully there. So I got scared. Uh, I mean, I didn't get in an accident. Uh, it was prevented. I'm back. Anyways, I don't have the money to pay for the situation. I, you know... When I went to a um, fix-it place, repair shop, um, they quoted me at like $750 to fix my car, and I don't have it. Not only that, but I live in an apartment, so I don't have anywhere to work on it. Not like I would know how to do it anyways, and I don't want to work on my own brakes because I don't trust myself with that. That's something kind of serious. And if I was professional, or if I'd been trained on it, or if I knew enough about it, you know, maybe. And I'm not saying I couldn't do it, because I know I could do it. I just don't trust it, because it's the brakes, and, you know. But anyways. So, again, when I was trying to explain that, I started losing air, because I wasn't breathing right. Okay, so next step. So I got home. And, you know, I was supposed to have a package delivered on the 16th. And it says that it was undeliverable, turned down. So I don't really want to go into the situation. But there's going to be a change of my lease agreement and also my package was turned away. So in my mind, I kind of feel at this point in time to go along with other stuff that I'm targeted, like I'm trying to be pushed out of this apartment <clears throat> because it's been like, for the past three weeks, it's been like something every week, a problem towards me from this apartment building. And, oh, fuck. And that's not the biggest issue. Um, I know that I have people that if I needed it, They'd make sure I had a place to be. So, again, like, this is not me telling a boohoo story. This is not me looking for, you know, sympathy. This is me explaining to you how this panic attack took place. So, after I was in an apartment and I got that news, I was like, okay, so I'll go up to the delivery place and I'll see if I can just pick up my packages but um yeah they didn't have them there apparently and it, they said that it was out to be delivered but yet the tracking the tracking number and all that it said that it would be delivered on the 19th so where the, are my packages if the person that's delivering them doesn't have them because they didn't take them with them because it's not being delivered now until the 19th. And then the place that is responsible for it doesn't have it either. Then where the f are my packages? So, at that point, I was already, you know, flustered and not happy. But yet, um, I kept it together and I was like, F it, you know... I was at the deliver. I can't talk because, see, I'm starting to fumble my words because my breathing and I'm, you know, panicky. So, after that, I had another appointment, which was the B12 shot. So, I, um, 
again, this was a Cincinnati place. So it was not really great for me because I had to drive on the expressway. I mean, that's scary in my little car right now. So the whole way there, my car was squealing. And the brakes was doing this thing where I pressed down and then it would hit and it would go down even more. And I don't understand that. Never had that done before. But um, I went to the doctor and I got my shot. They were great. I have no complaints. I walked back out to my car and I was about to leave and I was going to go uh, get the hair stuff and then go to my next appointment, which was right down the street. When I got back in my car, my car wouldn't even turn over. So that sucked. And... um. Yeah, yeah, it really fucking sucked. So I was trying to just turn it over, turn it over, and I stopped. And, you know, my other appointment wasn't for another two hours. So I was like, I got time. Whatever. I'll just sit here and relax. Again, trying to make the most of it, you know, just sit back, relax, roll down the windows. It was a nice, you know, humid, day, not humid, but like a warmish day. So it felt good outside. So whatever. And by that, I mean it could have been a lot worse. But, so, I sat there for a little bit, and I started the car again, and it finally jumped, and it finally took off. You know, it, like, actually started running. So, I went down the street to the place to get the hair stuff, and then when I got out of there, again, the car decided, oh, I'm not going to start. So, I was like, come on, please stop doing this to me. I don't need this sh right now. So uh, then I left out of there once my car did finally start up because I was like, you know, I still have like an hour left. I can just sit here and wait and then I'll just keep on trying it every once in a while, making the most of it, you know, relax. So uh, then my car finally did start. So I went to my next appointment. Um, it was at that appointment that... um. You know, that that was a great appointment and all that. And I actually paid there on the spot for the appointment. And then when I left out of there, I went to go somewhere else. Because I was just going to buy something on my way home. Because it's a pretty long drive. And I was like, if my car dies, at least I'll have water, you know. Um, so I got some water. And I went to go ring up at the gas station. And my card wouldn't work. Um, and I couldn't figure out why, because I knew that there's money in there. So I called my bank, and apparently, I don't know exactly what happened, because apparently they're going to look into it, but my account is at zero now. All the money, gone. Yeah. So, um... That wasn't very good at all. So when that happened and I was on the you know, phone with them and all I wanted to do was just buy the water and make it home. Some other things started coming across my mind. You know, like okay, so now my account's empty. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna have a place to live. And my car's dying. <sighs> sorry. Well, I'm not sorry because I shouldn't be sorry because I'm upset. Never be sorry for being upset. It's wrong to be sorry for that because, it, you know, it's good to let it out. If you bottle it up and you don't let it out, then it can destroy you from within. But... I uh, I left out of there, and I was driving home. You know, again, my car wouldn't start. <laughs> but then I finally made it home, wobbling the whole way home. And I park. And my package is in here. And nothing, just nothing. And I sat down, and I just, just instantaneously it was just like 
every single aspect of my life is being questioned in my mind out of my control just because the fact that it's my car, my place to live, and the money to live. And it just feels like at any second, all three are going to be gone. Because the banking account, I don't know what's going to happen. And then also, the car. I don't know. So now what? Now what am I going to do? If they can't get back the money that was in my account, how am I going to get my car fixed? Because it's not going to be safe to drive. My theory is if something happens to me, that's on me. If I drive the car, something happens to me, that's on me. But if something happens to somebody else because I was driving that car, that would be on me too, and I couldn't live with that. And then, you know, the house situation. So it's just been a really shitty day. And it, uh, it built up and got me. And I've just been falling apart all night. And it's nobody's fault. I mean, this is going to happen time to time just because I just get triggered. And I, it just happens just because I have so much weighing on me right now. And um, something that I'm working on is just letting stuff go. From the past, from, you know, just mistakes that are happening. Mm-hmm. But I have a hard time letting things go. So I'm working on that. And I need to. But I just really wanted to show my process of my panic attack. Um, you know, it's... All these bad things. And I feel doomed right now. And don't get me wrong, there's stuff going on up here. You never know what's going to happen. So I'm not going to give up. So at least I can control the panic attack to that aspect. So hi, everybody. Um, thanks for watching the video if you made it to the end of this. Um, I know it was kind of a... Uh, sad video but it was real so that's the main part I wanted to show you is how real it is and um, because one of my things that I'm trying to do is open up more and be more open with what's going on you know stop being so vague about things and this is the perfect opportunity to do that um, so I hope you liked it um, it was about panic attacks. I was going to do negative self-talk tonight, but that got thrown out of the bus, and this is what happened. So, uh, yeah, if you can, if you liked it, you know, let me know. Comment, like, share, subscribe, all the stuff. And uh, this and this, which have been probably there for a second, but, you know, whatever. Uh, bye.